So today I want to talk about a topic that I know is very lively and exciting, which is insurance. And I hope you understand my sarcasm as a lot of people like to avoid insurance um, and avoid discussions about insurance and any type of insurance. And I think a lot of that is because usually when you see an insurance policy, it might be 20 pages long and they use terminology that a lot of people do not understand. And so today I'm going to talk about some insurance programs that are available to beef producers, but I'm going to really hone in on the one program that I think is worth your time. And so that is PRF insurance. And so with that, I'll jump into today's presentation. I love getting questions. I'm going to ask if um, a couple of you can be interactive. I know a lot of people aren't necessarily live with me right now, but for those who are, please feel free to put some comments or questions in the Q&A in there. That way it can be a little bit more interactive. So insurance lingo that you might hear when we talk about insurance programs. So premium. The premium is the payment required for the policy. It's the amount the policy, when you try to buy a policy, it's the amount you pay. Those are your premiums. The subsidy is the amount the government pays for a policy. And so I'll be talking about that later, how PRF is subsidized by the government. Um, producer paid premium is the premium minus the subsidy. So what the actual producer pays after the subsidy is taken out. And indemnity is the compensation for the loss. And so if there is a loss, you would then get an indemnity payment. Um, and then deductible is determined by subtracting the coverage level from 100. And again, I'll get into that when we really dive into PRF insurance and what all those terms mean when I'm talking about uh, PRF. And so PRF, um, just so you guys know the acronym that I'm using, is Pasture, Rangeland, and Forage Insurance, and it uses a rainfall index. Um, and again, I'll jump into that. But why do we buy insurance? So I have two, picture, two types of pictures here. One is car insurance, and one is health insurance. So if you guys would type into the Q&A, um, why do we buy insurance? And Melinda and Ben, if you want to type in, that'd be great too, um, just so that I can see what people think. Why do we buy insurance? Okay, I got one answer, that was great. Pay for the inevitable in advance. And maybe some more will come in, but I think that is- Ashley, you've got a couple in the chat box too. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Sorry, didn't see the chat box. Okay, to manage risk and to be able to take business decisions with less risk. Okay, so when we think about car insurance, we want to have insurance in case something bad happens. We hope it never happens, and that is great. But if something bad were to happen, then we have it. Same with health insurance. We hope to never get sick, but in case we do, we buy health insurance, okay? So let's dive into livestock producer decisions. Well, you, as a livestock producer, you can make a couple of decisions. One, do not insure. Easy enough. You don't have to meet with an uh, insurance agent. You don't have to worry about these maybe more decisions. Um, and so you choose not to insure. And that can be your decision. And that might be your strategy. But if you do insure, insure you can do it with two types of programs, a mix of all of them, which is insurance or disaster assistance. And so if you have no, known since the 2014 Farm Bill, uh, the government came out with disaster assistance programs, the Livestock Forage Program, the Livestock Indemnity Program, 
the emergency assistance for livestock, honeybees, and farm-raised fish. Um, and those are all disaster assistance. So if an event happened, then you would get a payment later on from the government if it was ruled a disaster. And that is what disaster assistance does. You go to the local FSA office, you say, I'm here to submit my application to get a disaster assistance payment. And that's how it goes for disaster assistance. In insurance, you have different insurance programs, rainfall index insurance, livestock risk protection, LRP, that you might've heard of, livestock gross margin. Again, you might've heard of these programs where insurance allows you to decide what coverage levels you want, when you want to insure. Um, and so that way you are kind of making more decisions beforehand than waiting for the government to declare if it was a disaster or not. Um, so just a couple of differences, but there are a large variety of programs you can use uh, together and how you can use them is really up to you. But it's really, do you want to insure or do you not want to insure? And just going forward, kind of thinking of that. So the insurance cycle. As livestock producers, you haven't always had really great insurance programs or you didn't necessarily think about insurance as a risk management strategy. So how has insurance been used in the past? Well, and now. Well, it's used to manage risk for loss of yields or a loss of revenue. So producers, you pay premiums for a certain coverage level. You experience something, poor growing conditions, weather, insects, uh, wolves being reintroduced. There's many things that could happen, but with that, your production or revenue have to fall below that certain coverage level and then a payment should be made so that indemnity, indemnity is triggered. So you are supposed to get that payment because you lost production or revenue um, because of something that was out of your control. Um, so that's how insurance is supposed to work. In many instances, it does work that way. So I just wanna say this is the insurance cycle and it is how you are supposed to go through to getting that payment. So let's jump into PRF. So there's a background of rainfall index insurance, PRF insurance. So in 2007, RMA piloted the rainfall index and vegetative index insurance for pasture range and forage. And Idaho was actually one of the states that was in the vegetative index the longest. And it expanded crop insurance coverage for ranchers to help them predict protect against loss of forage produced for feeding livestock. And so the government provided this insurance, came up with it to help beef producers or ranchers in any sense. So in 2016, rainfall index took over all of vegetation index and expanded into all 48 contiguous states. So Hawaii and Alaska, they are not contiguous. So we replaced vegetative index with rainfall index in 16. And so Idaho was one of the last states out of the vegetative index. And so pasture, rangeland, and forage definition. Well, when we think of PRF, it's a perennial pasture, rangeland, and forage only. So there is a separate policy for annual forage that we will not be talking about today, but there is a policy for annual forage. So annual forage crops are not eligible under this PRF program. It's for gra grazing and hay land only, and it must be intended for haying and grazing livestock. Same acreage cannot be insured as both hay and grazing land producer must select one based on the intended use. If intent is to both hay and graze, producer must select whether they want to insure as hay or grazing land based on their needs and their risk associated with that. So rainfall index insurance. It is a single peril index insurance. 
So you might have heard crop producers say multi peril So that means it protects them over multiple disasters happening. So it could be that they have hail damage, it could be insect damage. So there's multi things that could go wrong. This is based off of one, rainfall, as in the name. And so insurance payments come only from an index based on one parameter, precipitation. So payments are not tied to production. Payments are tied to how little precipitation you got based on the historical rainfall. So I will show the tool to you um, coming up and it'll give you a little bit better of an idea. So you can suffer from basis risk where the index measurements are not actually tied to losses. And so again, I will show that to you when we're using the RMA tool that's available online um, that can show you where your grid is and what that means when I'm talking about this. So index insurance benefits minimize asymmetric inf information opportunities. Um, so what that means is that producers rely on something that is not on their farm. And so there's not a lot of information that goes to the government because it's just based on your grid. So the rainfall on your grid is what will actually trigger payments, not the rainfall on your farm or on your ranch. It won't be the rainfall they use for this. It is actually in your grid index that they use that precipitation. And the weather data comes from the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, Climate Prediction Center. And so that's where they get this precipitation data to make payments on PRF insurance. So the areas are defined by grids, like I talked about. And so it's about a 17 by 17 mile grid. So that it is a large grid. Um, it does not follow geopolitical boundaries. Some grids are not insurable. Most of them are, um, as I have seen, all of them in Idaho are. Um, there's no, there's significant portions of grid outside US border, and there's no actual data for such grids. Um, so we don't have to worry about that in Idaho, but if you want, there's a link to this, and I'm not sure if Melinda can post my PowerPoint after this, um, but, we can get it to you if you're interested. So when you are buying a PRF insurance contract, you get to pick your coverage level. And so coverage levels vary from 70 to 90% coverage in 5% increments. And you get a subsidy based on what level of insured uh, or what coverage level you choose. So at the 90% highest coverage level, I get a 51% subsidy. So the government pays 51% of my insurance premium, okay? And the rest is what I pay. So then you have to pick a productivity factor, which is 60 to 150% in 1% increments. So for example, if I were to say that my pasture is 150% productive. It means that I have 1.5 times more productive land than my county base level. So my land is way more productive than the rest of my county. And that way you are ensuring it as it is that productive. Um, interval selection, which is what we'll dive into a little bit more today, um, is you have to pick at least two intervals, and these intervals are two months. So you can pick May, June, July, August, and you have to assign weights to them, and the weights must equal 100. And I'm going to show you the example in the RMA decision tool, which I think is very useful, and I think it will make more sense when I do it. So for example, May, June, and July, August, each two-month interval weighted at 50%. So I want to ensure 
May and June, 50%, and July and August, 50%. Together, that's 100% of the insured acres that I've assigned. So, so an example insurance contract. We're gonna do a 90% coverage level with 100% productivity factor. And the intervals insured during and across different expected precipitation levels throughout the year. And so I'm going to stop the share and I'm going to share another part, sorry, and and there we go. Okay. Are you guys able to see my screen? Yep. Okay. So once you go to this website, you're able to see a uh, pasture rangeland forage support tool, okay? And so the support tool takes you to usually the map of the United States, but I've already zoomed into Idaho. And so I zoom in to Idaho and I find where I live or where my pasture land is located. So I am located in Twin Falls and this is the grid that my house is in, okay? No, I don't have pasture here, but I know some people who do in the Jerome area on the other side. So this is my grid. And so you can see my grid ID is 27063. Um, technically it's saying Jerome, even though I live in Twin Falls, and that's fine because it doesn't respect geopolitical um, boundaries. So it's fine, this is where I live, even though I'm technically in Twin Falls, okay? So once you select your grid, you then look at historical indices. So when we talk about historical indexes, we're talking about when was rainfall less than normal, okay? And so if you're looking at this, let's look at 2019, okay? And so inside the, um, inside my grid, you can see that in January and February, we had a high precipitation. We were 150% um, of rainfall that year. So we were above normal, above normal in February, March, above normal March, April, above normal April, May, above normal May and June. Wow, then June and July, June and July we were only 25% of normal in that interval. And so if we had insured in this month, in this June and July interval, we would have definitely seen a payment, okay? Same with July and August. We have insured at that 90% coverage level, well, we were below 70% of historical rainfall, okay? And then August, September, you see was above. September and October, it was below that 90% coverage level. October, November, wow, 25%. November, December, 67%. So you go to the decision tool. So let's say I am grazing in my grid. So I say intended use, grazing, great. Coverage level, 90%, productivity factor, 100%. I'm saying that I am normal. I, my pasture in Jerome, in my grid, is basically as everyone else's. So I have 100% productivity. I want to ensure 100% of 100 acres in 2019. So that June and July, so I'm putting 50% because I just saw that my historical rainfall for that month, we wanna see what our payments would have been because it dropped way below. And then it was that September, October. So if we had insured in those months, which you can play around with this, you would see that we would have gotten $436 in indemnity payment for June and July. 
And then that September and October, we would have gotten $41. And so what, what did we pay? So we paid $154. And so the difference between those two numbers is actually your return from insurance. So you only paid $154, you got $477 back, okay? And then it shows you estimated indemnities. Um, so it seems like a lot of the years, we can see that June and July has paid out more often than that September and October. As you can see, zero, 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 um, which would make sense. So let's go back to the PowerPoint. But that is the RMA tool that I think is great to use. Um, and it's very useful if you're interested in signing up for this program. So I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the program. Well, the, the months that get the highest paid indemnities over time are usually the months that have the highest premium rates. So that June, July, as you can see, those premium rates are higher than say a January, February or a February, March. And so you can see that the premiums vary by interval that you select. And producer paid premium is what the producer actually pays after the subsidy is taken out. So at the 90% coverage level, we get that 51% subsidy. And so this is actually what we're paying uh, for the insurance contract. So PRF has been looked at as an income enhancement tool, even though it is supposed to be used as an insurance product. And so when I asked why do we use insurance, we hope that we don't have to use insurance. We pay for it just in case bad things happen. And so why? Why pay for insurance on months that you don't need that rainfall? When the rainfall really matters, you should be insuring because that's when you might not have forage for, be, uh, for cows to eat. Um, so it really matters when you pick these intervals and what time of year that the intervals for you matter most. And so, like I said, if you wanted to use this as an income enhancement tool, I do not recommend it. You might get more frequent payments, but in the years that there's a drought and you don't have forage, you might not get a payment, which is why you should buy this insurance for months that you need that rainfall to then uh, use as grasses uh, to graze later on. So I recommend using this as a production risk management tool. Um, you might get less frequent payments, but the payments happen in years that they're needed. Um, and that is a huge thing. When you are out of grass and you need to supplement with feed, that can be a huge bill for beef producers. And so with that, um, I just wanted to show you, share with you a couple of resources. Um, the Idaho Agdiz website has a lot of resources. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel, which is on the Idaho Agdiz website. So if you just type in Idaho Agdiz to Google, you will find our website. So we're actually going to be expanding these um, livestock insurance classes, uh, where we'll have a lot of workshops in the fall to expand on PRF for both beef and sheep. But we're also going to be talking about LRP, which is the Livestock Risk Protection, and LGM, Livestock Gross Margin. And we'll be coming, I hope it's in person, to see you guys um, and talk about these programs across the state of Idaho. And so we're actually working with Utah State and a couple of other universities where we're using their PRF decision tool to then implement it into Idaho. Um, and so, I have the link here. I know I'm coming close to time, but if you're interested, it's a really cool tool because they show you what 
um, your indemnities look like, what your returns look like versus the weather. Um, and it's a lot easier to use than maybe this RMA tool. Um, so I would just check it out. It's only Utah right now, but again, we'll be expanding that into the fall. Um, so I am very excited for that. So just showing you how payment is calculated um, to trigger your payment. Um, if you're interested in that, it's a lot of words um, and a lot of math calculations, but here it is. Um, and with that, I'll take any questions.